the past few Battlefield titles, Battlefield 3, 4, Hardline, and Battlefield 1, all started to stray away from the core nature of the Battlefield franchise. Teamwork, squad play, tactics, and strategy. I'm not talking about milsim level stuff here, but the games that have released in the past eight or nine years or so have definitely lost that tactical edge that previous games once offered. Battlefield 5 is looking to turn back the clock a little bit here and reintroduce those team and squad play mechanics that lead to tactical and strategic gameplay. But does that mean that players of the game will adapt properly? The danger with introducing significant change to a long-standing franchise, as we saw with Battlefield 1, is that sometimes that can alienate previous fans or simply not be to the liking of many players who have played previous titles. Here's some examples from Battlefield 1. The game significantly changed the mentality of players from defensive and offensive play to pretty much purely offensive, where attacking constantly tended to yield better results than defending. We saw a massive shift in the conquest scoring system, that's Battlefield's classic mode, so that both teams were earning score at the same time, rather than using a tug of war approach, and DICE chose to move in-house with their server control. Third-party server hire was replaced with an EA and DICE controlled system, which vastly reduced the flexibility and control that server admins could have over their Battlefield experience. That I know resulted in a lot of clans and communities not playing Battlefield 1 and instead choosing to return to Battlefield 4. These changes are newer, of course, and they are specific to Battlefield 1, but you compare that to the gradual decline of team play and squad play over the years, which, while many long-term fans have been very vocal about and didn't like to see, that's almost become the accepted direction of Battlefield games now. So when I talk about significant changes alienating fans, this return to more tactical and strategic play, whilst I see it as a great step in the right direction for the franchise, many players who have joined the community in the last few years might now feel this is a step in the wrong direction. DICE certainly has got its work cut out with Battlefield 5 here. Battlefield 5's direction is squarely based around squad play, working with other players to use their archetype strengths to supplement your own, or to have other players rely on you and your actions to keep the squad alive and moving forwards. There are so many new features in Battlefield 5 that link into this squad play mantra, some that we don't even know about yet, but I'm going to list as many as I can that I've got in my notes here so that you can get some idea of what DICE is really planning for this game. First of all, any squad member can now revive other squad members using the new Buddy Revive system. This is a properly physical animation now, no more sticking syringes into lifeless bodies, and it takes a good few seconds to complete and revive your squad mate. Once revived, they only return to a limited health amount, and they'll need to find a medic if they want to heal back all the way up to 100. And this leads me nicely into my next point about squad play, there's no health regen in Battlefield 5. Health regen will be distinctly different to previous titles here. Now, DICE hasn't officially stated at what level that health regen actually stops, but after a certain point, you will no longer automatically regenerate health, and instead you need to go and find a medic for your healing ability. You can also head to any of the objective points on the map that you're playing and find a healing station where you'll be able to heal up fully as well, but running around and entering gunfights with half health is going to result in quite a few more deaths if you're not paying attention to your health bar. I've spoken about the Buddy Revive system. The Medic class and its archetypes will retain a full revive mechanic, which is different to the Buddy Revive. A full revive works on any soldier on your team, rather than only being available to squad members, but it mimics the Buddy Revive system with it being a proper physical animation. It's shorter than a Buddy Revive as well, and it gives the revive soldier back their full amount of health. 
When you play as a support soldier, of course your role is to dish out the ammo to the squad, but no longer will you simply be able to magically obtain ammo from crates on the ground. You'll need to go over to them and interact with them to get the ammo you need. You might remember a specialisation in Battlefield 1 that I really, really didn't like that allowed support soldiers to give ammo to other players without placing an ammo crate down on the ground. That's gone and it's likely never coming back. This places more importance on the support player to actually place down ammo crates or of course they can equip the ammo pouches and throw them out to their squad on the fly to keep them topped up with bullets. Arguably one of the biggest new squad play mechanics in this game is the ability to drag downed soldiers. In Battlefield 5, rather than your soldier laying dead on the ground when they're taken down to zero health, you enter this down but not out state where you can be revived from, dragged around, and you as the down player, you can scream for help or accelerate the bleed out if nobody is around. This new dragging feature will allow squad mates to bring you out of the line of fire before conducting a full or buddy revive on you, and hopefully that translates to less revive annihilation. It is worth remembering, it takes considerably longer to revive players now, so this is again another mechanic to stop players reviving whilst you're in danger. The support soldier also holds the power within the squad to build fortifications faster than any other member, although any player on the map at that time has access to the toolbox and can build fortifications. It's just the support soldier can do it a little bit quicker. When arriving at an objective in order to better protect it, it's worth building up some sandbag walls and constructing the healing and resupply stations there. Once those are done, the entire squad will benefit from proper heals and ammo handouts whilst being able to use the newly created cover to defend that point. And lastly, there's no more auto or spam spotting in Battlefield 5. You'll need to use physical map locations and callouts within your squad to locate enemies who need taking out. There will still be some elements of 3D spotting in the game. That's where a little icon will appear above an enemy player's head as a spotted enemy player. But gone are the days of hunting Dorito icons through smoke clouds. You will see nowhere near as many of those 3D icons as you have in the past. That's the list of new systems that I've got the DICE is implementing into Battlefield 5 to change up the combat loop from previous games. This doesn't mean that the pacing of the game is really that much different to Battlefield 4 or Battlefield 1. It's still the high octane action that you've come to expect from Battlefield games. But these new elements will make you conscious about your decisions and make you aware that your squad both matters to you and you matter to it. My one fear from all of this squad play integration, however, is purely the players, us, the community. Will we actively engage with all of these new systems or will we simply stick to what we know from past titles? Will we actually use the buddy revive system knowing that a medic can revive that fallen player much faster? Will support players actually place down ammo and will we actively go and find it? Or will we just fall back to supply stations on flags or pick up ammo from dead bodies on the ground? Will we actually use callouts within the squad to mark enemies or will we simply become frustrated being killed all the time from enemies we had no idea were actually there? All of these new features and their success or failure comes down to players like us actually using them during a round in Battlefield 5. Now having spoken to a few of the developers both before and at the reveal event for the game, the game is structured in such a way that you need to engage with these new mechanics to be successful. But that you can run Lone Wolf if you want to, you will be at a disadvantage, yes, but you should still be able to survive, it's just you're better off sticking with your squad. I'm really liking this direction that DICE is taking with Battlefield 5. It's rolling back the years a little bit when there was more emphasis on team play and squad play and things were a bit more tactical, but I just can't shift this feeling in my head that if players don't engage properly with these new mechanics, then the whole squad play mantra could fall apart very, very quickly. I'd be interested at getting your thoughts on this topic because arguably this is something that most potential players should know about and should be thinking about for Battlefield 5 rather than the backlash to the customization and DICE choosing not to follow World War 2 
as people expected them to. These squad play features are going to massively change how you play Battlefield and when you see gameplay at EA Play I think people will get a much better understanding of where this game is actually going. But thank you very much for watching anyway, do leave some comments down below in the comments section, I'm really interested to hear what you think. Make sure you subscribe to the channel with notifications switched on so you don't miss any of my videos next week coming from Los Angeles where I'll be covering Battlefield 5 at EA Play and that gameplay reveal obviously. But until next time, my name is Westy and I'll catch you guys in the next video.